Hi, I'm selling out. Well, not really. This is nothing I'm doing here I feel is selling out, but let me explain. There are a lot of channels on YouTube in the VR sector that do news videos, and they all do a great job. In fact, they're probably still going to do a much better job than what this video is going to do. But last week I came to a realization, upon more realizations, upon even more realizations, that there are things that aren't really covered that I find all the time and it kind of drives me insane. A lot of things in this real world drive me insane. And I tend to tweet out those little news segments that I think are really interesting are important to the medium, but those things don't catch on. So I decided, screw it, I'm just going to do my own news show. If I can't have other people report it, I'll report it in a more long form way. Yeah, but honestly, there's another reason why I want to do these sort of weekly videos, if it gets to that point. The more I learn about all these huge companies working on headsets and a lot of these other hardware pieces that they want to bring to market as soon as they can, I came to the realization, I'm not making enough money. No, seriously, like, it's already pretty hard when a new product comes out and it's around the $800 to $1,000 range, especially since I'm a PC VR enthusiast, and that hardware usually is around that price range to begin with. So I gotta find ways to be able to make more money so I can review the products I really care about for the audience. I do enjoy doing these hardware reviews, they're just expensive. Anyway, enough of the real world, let me go in to talk about what this series will be. It'll probably come out every Monday if there's enough news that I care about. The big keywords being news that I care about. There are dry times where there's a lot of VR news that I really don't care about and just don't want to report on. And if that happens, which is likely to happen, there will be weeks I skipped. Just expect that. I won't really care if there's a new game on App Lab that reached a certain amount of views or downloads or anything. That's just not the stuff I really care to report on. So I will try my best to find interesting news for you all. Just don't expect weekly as much as, you know, some other channels might be able to put out. Okay, enough of that. I did find some really interesting news I saw no one cover. Like, no one. And it's crazy to me because they're really big. Like, really, really big. It, it, wh wh what's going on? Everyone seems to complain that Meta is holding a tight grip on the VR AR industry and there's really no sort of light at the end of the tunnel. I really never felt that this Meta dominance would last forever because they're just the only really large company that's really investing in this. As someone that was a huge believer in VR and XR or whatever you want to call it, I always believed that there would be other big companies jumping in when the time was right. And whenever that time did come, Meta would start struggling a bit. And that doesn't even just count Western companies, people that live in the US or Europe. There are a lot of stuff going on in China. And a lot of these Chinese companies are actually very interested in releasing their products worldwide. I have two companies here I'm gonna talk about that I got some internal sources and Chinese media also reporting some big investments into the metaverse. First, let's talk about ByteDance. If you don't know who ByteDance is, uh, you might know the name TikTok. Yeah, TikTok is owned by the Chinese platform ByteDance, or the company, whatever you wanna call them. They recently purchased a company known as Pico. If you might have heard Pico for about the Pico Neo 3, which was a Chinese counterpart to basically the Quest 2, and it did pretty okay, better than most headsets in that region. Pico was owned by a company known as Guartech. Guartech actually manufactures a lot of VR headsets for the entire industry, including most of the headsets that are made by Meta, the Quest 2. Last year it was actually reported and confirmed that ByteDance actually purchased Pico from Guartech. Funny thing about that though is actually there's still a manufacturing agreement between uh, ByteDance and Guartech. So even though Guartech sold off Pico, they're still gonna be pretty much mass producing every Pico headset. So win win for them. But this raised the EVR industry on alert a little bit because people are realizing, oh crap, TikTok, that's very similar to Facebook and a lot of garbage related to that. We're having another social media company getting into the VR scene and likely to dominate it and whenever they actually do get in. And yeah, that's probably very likely. Pico is actually a very talented team of R&D manufacturers and engineers. And when, if they actually did bring the resources with ByteDance money to the West, they probably could do a lot better than they are now. Of course, a lot of people are concerned about selling their data to Facebook or Meta. Well, you know, there's probably a lot more people concerned about sending their data over to Chinese companies as well. Anyway, this month, some very big news on an update to all that ByteDance Pico stuff that is actually very notable. Zhang Lidong, chairman of ByteDance, said that they are proactively adjusting the business direction, goals, and internal structure of the company, in the early stages at least. ByteDance wants to focus on its main business, but use that main business, primarily the money that is gained from that business, to give a full play to its technological advances. 
continue to make efforts in VR and explore the global market, relying on products and services. So TikTok is mostly a service. We all know that you don't buy a device that is a TikTok device. So that kind of plays into the fact that they do want to start getting to the hardware scene more. They also wish to compete with major international companies to acquire larger users and markets. Whoa. That sentence is very big because that's basically the chairman of ByteDance saying, we want to be the next Apple or the next Tencent or the next Meta, whatever you want to call their sort of choice of company. ByteDance is currently accelerating the recruitment of VR, AR optical experts, optical process engineers, sensor architects, etc with salaries ranging from 35,000 to 80,000, which is pretty good for Chinese you know, money. So this is hardware. They are going full on with the product plans. They want to release VR hardware that can also boost their platforms that they plan on releasing to boost their metaverse practices. They already own Pico, so they got a lot. So the fact that Pico, which is the subsidiary of ByteDance, is getting a lot more talent, or at least hoping to get a lot more talent pushed in to release products to a worldwide stage, is very big. And I think a lot of VR AR competitors are starting to look at this more and maybe feel a little nervous. And while ByteDance has grown to be a big company in a short time, there is one bigger company that I think a lot of people know about. In fact, it's just even owns a lot of Western companies or at least a lot of stakes in a lot of Western companies. And that is Tencent. There were some internal documents that show that Tencent is vigorously building a world-class team to pursue the next hard technology era which some people call the metaverse, but I really want to just say that the next hard technology era. Some people will call this era the smartphone era, which it got a lot of people into the Internet through the use of very easy mobile devices. Well, this internal documents is basically saying that Tencent's believe that the next hard technology era is VR AR devices. That's big. I believe that, too, but we all knew that. This includes an XR ecosystem, XR hardware, AI machine learning and content to boost all those things. Tencent will even set up an XR game studio. That is another big thing. Tencent is known to also own a large stake in Epic Games, and the fact that they also want to build a huge studio just to produce game content for the XR industry is... That blows my mind. That's I can only imagine what kind of content they would throw out with the sort of talent and money they have. Job positions related to this venture include leaders to set up retail locations, partnerships, and hardware R&D. So maybe in the future, we might see some Tencent retail locations for VR AR. I mean, we already know that Meta is exploring the idea of actually having brick and mortar stores for their products, such as, you know, the Quest 2 or Cambria. That might be very common to just see VR AR headsets on display in a lot of retail locations. If retail exists, Amazon Array makes retail locations kind of struggle a little bit. But when people start buying stuff in the metaverse and things such as VR chat and all the virtual markets that pop up after that, yeah, brick and mortar stores are not going to get a break. <laughs> this was another thing that I reported back last month, but no one covered it and it drove me nuts. Uh, Tencent acquired a company known as Black Shark Technology. If you don't know who Black Shark Technology is, they basically developed and created hardware devices that were very popular, mostly in the Eastern markets for high end gaming smartphones, basically. If you've heard of the Asus ROG phone, basically they created stuff like that, but it was again heavily popular more the Eastern market more than the West, but they did still sell in the West. Yeah, Tencent actually bought that company purely to turn them into a VR AR development hardware company for their own business. They wanted to create devices similar to the Quest 2, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. The Quest 2, all in all, is basically put, putting in a bunch of like sort of smartphone equipment together to make a VR headset focus on gaming. And acquiring a company that is very already aware of the actual high end PC game or not PC, a mobile gaming market and transitions that to VR AR headsets. It makes a lot of sense. They know they have the capabilities to do it. They just got to put it in a different shell so to say. So those are two big companies, ByteDance and Tencent, that are looking to go worldwide with all their adventures in the metaverse, and we'll likely see some hardware from them within the next two years, I would say. Maybe even earlier for the Pico, because Pico's been always working on R&D event ad ad advices and stuff, and yeah, it'll be ByteDance Pico. Huh. All right, let's uh, let's leave the land beyond the east and go back to the west. Apple, Apple, Apple. That is always the word I always hear about when I go on Twitter and people are always asking me, what's Apple doing? What's Apple doing this? Where's that headset? Well, we got some very interesting news. Very, very big news, I would say. 
DigiTimes reported this literally today. Apple has completed key production tests for its long rumored augmented reality and virtual reality, mixed reality, headset. According to DigiTimes, the headset's EVT2 design to be more precise. DigiTimes reports it is to be expected to debut by the end of 2022. DigiTimes is planning to release a report tomorrow. We may get more detailed info about this, so keep an eye on my Twitter for like sort of nerd puke if that actually does come to fruition. So what does this mean? Well, EVT2 is basically engineering validation testing. Uh, it's when they're trying to see if a prototype can actually be put together with a lot of mass producible parts and see how it does. And Apple is known for having really tough testing or really tough verification of their products when it goes through these phases. So the fact that it completed EVT2 is a good sign for the product's progress. If you want me to compare it to other products from other companies who also have done EVT um, for their hardware, I will use Valve because that's the obvious example for this channel. So the Steam Deck was announced last year in August 2021, and when they announced it, they also announced that developers could request de developer kits. And those developer kits was actually from the batch of EVT's uh, twos that they developed in their actual EVT testing. It actually went very well and a large batch that went out to developers actually would go on to be slightly tweaked to become the design validation testing DVT, which is not EVT, EVT, DVT, got it? So if everything goes well with the EVT2 from Apple, they could literally start sending these out to developers so that they are very heavily NDA'd and start making their content work on their headset, you know, to get them a good push. But what if things don't go well with the EBT2? Maybe there's more issues that need to be resolved. Well, this is not unheard of. Valve again did this something very similar with the Valve Index controllers, the Valve Knuckles, which would go on to release with the Index. Back in June 2018 is when Valve announced the uh, EBT2s were a thing and would start sending them out to a bunch of developers as well to start getting, hey, this is what you can start tinkering with your VR games to get finger tracking and stuff. Well, unfortunately, a lot of developers started reporting back a lot of issues with things breaking, especially the little strap that you would adjust for your hand size. That was a big problem. Um, I, I had EV3s and even with EV3s, they were a problem. So that kind of slowed things down a bit and they would have to actually release an EVT3, which would then go on to be tweaked one more time for the DVT. And even the DVT, which is basically the same as the mass production version, obviously has issues, which we'll get into that in a little bit. But usually it seems for most companies, once you get to the EVT2 phase, you can start actually giving them out to more third parties if you really wish to do so. The headset is believed to be announced, or it's been rumored for a while, that it originally was going to be announced at WWDC, which is Apple's annual developer conference. You might ask, why would they announce a product at a developer conference? Well, this is a brand new line for Apple. They've never really touched AR, VR, except for stuff related to cameras on their smartphones. And if you really want to get people excited, the first people you really need to get excited for is the developers who are going to create content, which will eventually reach consumers and then consumers can get excited. So it's very important to really push this product out to developers first, because again, content is king. If you don't know anything about the device or what it's rumored to be, uh, well, I would say the specs actually put it to be a standalone device, but a very high end standalone device, similar to Cambria, but probably even further. It will focus on both VR and AR using Apple's custom silicon chips that are similar to what is in their Mac products. So basically an M1 type chip or the M2 that is rumored to come out very soon within later in the year. I got private word that the M2 is actually very similar to the M1 except it has way better energy consumption, which makes sense for a VR headset that also needs a battery strapped to the head. You want to get as much performance per watt as you can. So while the M2 is not expected to be more powerful than the M1 too much, but it's gonna, again, be better for power consumption. It's also planned to have dual 4K per eye micro OLED displays. Micro OLED, micro OLED, yeah. That might sound pretty familiar if you watch this channel for a while. Um, yeah, check out my Valve's Vader slash Deckard VR headsets with Apple Video if you really just want more insanity and madness after this one. Yeah, that one was a crazy one to research. Peek into my brain and soul now. All right, let's take a break from hardware for a little bit and talk about software. Last Friday, I started off another new series in addition to this one I'm starting on the Mondays. And it was basically called VR Chat's Weekend Worlds, which I would be spending the weeks finding out some very beautiful landscapes and worlds that people can visit either alone or with friends in VR chat. Now, I am wholly aware that VR chat just seems very weird and just weird and scary for even some people. 
I've even seen people kind of describe it as degenerate, which, you know, screw you. No, but seriously, VRChat is really years ahead of any other social VR platform. And the reason for this is because the passionate community really makes and tinkers and experiments with so many things, especially as the VRChat dev team does a very good job in releasing the tools slowly over time so that new capabilities can be added. So we have worlds that are recreation of things in the real world and things that we never thought could be possible in the digital world. But a big part of VRChat is avatars. People like to express themselves in many different ways in the real world, but there's only so much limit to what you can do in the real world with expressing yourself. And that's why VRChat avatars are very fascinating to me and really everyone that is in the VRChat platform. Instead of being a an emoji or character of yourself, people choose to be whatever they want with ears, uh, legs, multiple legs, multiple arms, whatever they want to be. Human, anime, robot, uh, animal, whatever. And it's very enticing to be this character because again, when you're in VR and you see, look down and see that you're this creature you could never be in real life, it's a very special experience, even if it's a little weird at first. And a better way to express yourself through these avatars is something that was just released in open beta for VRChat called OSC, which stands for Open Sound Control. With this, people can now implement a ton of different tools to make their avatars express themselves even better with a lot of hardware and software related to their computer. We are seeing early experiments such as things as be people being able to control robot drones around their avatar with just their voice, eye and face tracking support finally with the OSC support, and even text of voice, which would be very useful for people who are deaf. People can talk and have a little speech bubble translating that voice to text and everyone will be able to understand you if you really need that feature. And these are only the first days of experimentation. I'll probably have a video very soon showing off some of the best things I'm seeing with all these tinkerers that are making OSC support avatars. I cannot reiterate, it's some amazing stuff I'm seeing and it's just exactly the stuff that makes me feel like VR and VR chat is just like when people were exploring the internet in the 90s with every time you would log on, you would see something new. And VR chat is the only thing where I feel like that happens. So yeah, VR chat is weird, but I really recommend you give it a try, even if it's alone. You don't have to go into public lobbies, do private lobbies with the worlds I recommend in the new series and it'll be a great time, I promise. Now we have some final news that is a little delayed, but it's still new news. Valve is partnering with the team iFixit, the company who's known for giving ratings to devices on how fixable they are for consumers. They plan to partner with iFixit to provide parts for not only the Steam Deck, which is set to announce this week, but also the Valve Index VR products. The Valve Index is probably most known for negatively for its build quality and things that would break inside the headset. Most notably, people report that the thumbsticks always drift over time, and that's a huge problem for the Valve Index but also things such as Lighthouse Space Stations, which enable the insane tracking features that people love about it, those things kind of die as well. And if you're out of warranty, a lot of times these sort of third party, uh, or not third party, first party accessories, such as the Lighthouse or Index controllers would be out of stock forever. And if you didn't get an RMA in or out of warranty, you would pretty much screwed and couldn't use VR. So while we don't know the actual parts that Valve is going to provide for all these VR products, I really hope that they actually do push the idea of being able to replace the motors or other little pieces inside lighthouses, for example, which I've had two 2.0s that have died. But the fact they're doing this for Index and Steam Deck also show a big change in the company that they are really trying to, at least on the outside, uh, support the right to repair, which is very important because as we, as a society, are constantly buying new products, giving a longevity out of products by not forcing them to die early is a really a good use case and helps the environment a bit. Again, I should remind you that this is also for the Steam Deck, so there'll also be re uh, repair parts for the Steam Deck. And that comes out this week for the first time pre-orders. The embargo also ends this week, so we might see some VR videos very soon. I should be in the first wave of Steam Deck pre-orders, so if I don't get it this week, it'll be definitely be next week. And I'm definitely going to put it through its paces to ensure I can see whatever sort of VR functionality I can get out of the device, because I think it's a very interesting concept, especially since I believe that this AMD special APU with the Valve branding on it is very related to Valve's VR plans in the future for their own standalone device. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, that is everything I have this Monday. I don't really know what to name the series. We're just going to call it Whatever the crap I care about. Okay, maybe I do need to find a better name. Bye!